No, 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 no. What I said, what? No, no. What I said was, if we could just have as well as those three January transfer signings, if we could also have Lauren Shankland on the pitch at Ibrox as well as them, we'd start winning games by four or five nothing. Now, who was on the pitch today as well as your three January signings? Who was on the pitch today as well as your three January signings? Mm -hmm. And what was the score? What was the final score today? You're welcome. Yep, you're welcome. How you doing, folks? Welcome to your Jersnet um, kind of longer form, hanging about outside there, but it's like a bad smell, immediate post-match reaction pod. Coming to you in association with Forest Precision Engineering and our good friends at Football Prizes. Let's not talk about football prizes yet. We've got that one we won in December, but let's not talk about more prizes yet. But we're making it a lot more likely, aren't we? Um, I am here, say, Alec Anderson, sitting in a tin can. Far above the world, the planet Earth is blue and there's nothing they can do. Nothing they can do tomorrow, it doesn't matter how many Celtic score at Fur Park. We will still be top of the table at the end of this weekend. And can I just say, just say a big apology actually from me uh, about the sheer predictability of my partner. I got a text, that, uh, sorry, a tweet uh, at full time from Robert Carmichael, good friend of Jersnet. And he was saying, oh great, I'm looking forward to your post-match reaction pod. You'll be talking about the you know, five goals and the five stars and the 55 and... Sorry about that, folks. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> people can actually work out before I say it what I'm going to say. I had that one tucked up my sleeve all week, you know, but there was no way I could have predicted uh, that we're actually going to win by five goals to nil. Rangers scoring a goal for, as Robert says, uh, every point that we have gone clear at the top of the SPFL Premiership today um, for every five pointed star. Uh, above the scroll crest on our kit, a, a point for every pluck in my fat face. Hey, that's just the thing when you're a, when you're in your late teens, you still get a bit of acne. Uh, a point for every one of those guys that makes such great burgers in this fine city of ours. Aura, you want aura? Uh, I remember, I remember going to see. I'll, I'll leave that for later. I'll leave that for later. Uh, the main thing today was we have been watching Rangers in an absolutely incredible year. The calendar year 2024, we've watched them in incredible form. Um, it's the kind of the opposite of a, of a normal squirrel. I don't know what squirrels are like in Belgium, but we've been squirreling away the points in winter. Not gathering nuts for winter. We've been gathering them in winter so that when it comes to the, the busier end of the season, the business end of the season, which is in, you know, in springtime and today I'm looking around me still and the sky is just, it's light, isn't it? It's getting lighter at night. It's no that kind of you know, it's like a consolation if you get a kind of, a kind of light day uh, during uh, winter time, early winter, mid winter. This is promise, hope, and the the light in the sky tonight, the blue skies around Ibrox uh, tonight, as we're all leaving this beautiful stadium of ours, that we're going to go on to do magnificent things. But just in case things start getting a bit hairy, just and think oh, things are going to be yesterday. That draw yesterday for Europa League, what a week it's been! What an absolutely fantastic week it's been. Starting off with that win up in Perth, scoring goal number fifty six. Uh, and to go top of the table in our pursuit of title number 56 and then we end the week you know, just it's lovely to spend on Thursday watching teams like Milan, Feyenoord, Roma. We oh, think these guys are going to be. We're already in that draw. You think you're going to make it through the last 16? We're already, we're already in that last 16. But no, when he's go, when he's go, let's see what he can manage. And we end up getting a uh, Benfica as uh, as Biff through Barnsley of Saxon would say the eagle. The eagle has landed. It's going to land at Ibrox. Uh, next month in a couple of weeks time it's going to be absolutely fantastic and then we're going to have a Scottish Cup match at Easter Road in between times so if we are going to do something in this really tight title race we had better make sure we are squirreling away as many points as possible and the manager has just turned us into automatisms he loves automatisms and we are just a three point machine you know throwing in a few little cup wins uh, over lower league sides on the way to keep us ticking over but it's three points three points three points Rangers have won every game they have played so far in the calendar year 2024 and it's a good thing because it's a difficult fixture we've got on Wednesday night but that's what we're thinking today this is going to be a difficult fixture Hearts a form team Probably the other form team in the league right now, as well as ourselves, and there was just absolutely no contest today. We're one nothing up within two minutes. Uh, we're three nothing up at half time. We're four nothing up within a few minutes of the restart. Five nil, five nil to Rangers, and uh, we have gone through. I'd say over the past few weeks. I know people want to get straight into the details of the game and that kind of thing, but I'm always keen to say, folks, it's not a match report because I can't do match reports because my head was away bit. You know, my head's away bit most either through nerves or through sheer elation as it was today. So my observations on the the ins and outs of the game are always far from accurate. But what I can tell you about is how I'm feeling, and hopefully that will tally with something you're feeling as well. Um, 
we've over the past two or three weeks we have gone from right hang in there just hang in there hang in the, the coattails I, we're looking good for doing that we're looking good for doing that in case Celtic slip up and then it's like we could get to within level points we could get to within level points of Celtic can you handle that pressure Rangers they've handled that pressure they've got to within level points and not really caring about goal difference and stuff like that and then it's like another game you know well tonight if you if you score enough goals tonight you won't just go level on points but you'll go ahead of them on goal difference oh we just fell a goal short but we kept level on points oh sir can you maybe not handle it Rangers can you maybe not handle it and then last week we were presented with a chance to go ahead of Celtic on points um, we not only did that, but we went a couple of goals, three goals, I think, ahead of them on goal difference too. And today, the only thing that was remaining was can you handle it when you have got yourself top of the league, Rangers? When you have been presented with the chance to go top of the league and you have taken that, you've consistently taken it, and then you've gone points clear at the top of the league. Can you handle that? My God, did we handle it today? We seem to enjoy it. I think it's the rarefied air that this Rangers team breathes on uh, more competently than any other kind of air going. And... Uh, yeah, we've also gone ahead of Celtic on goal scored as well as goal difference. and It's just absolutely magnificent. You, you add to that, you come away from the league. What else has Philip Clement had to deal with? Europe. He gives us one of the greatest results in our entire history. He provides surprises as well. He, prov he provides like total overperformances. But we go to Real Betis, uh, we go to Seville, and we have our first ever win against Spanish competition on Spanish soil in our like, nearly 70-year European history. Absolutely fantastic. And then there's also an, an even more grinding negative pressure than just to go top of the league. There's an inability to win that League Cup. Over, it's just a, a historic inability to win the League Cup over the past decade or so. That's how we're supposed to start our comeback from 2012, our time in the lower leagues was targeting the League Cup. We've just singularly not been able to win it. And then Celtic get put out of it at the first chance this season. So we've really got to win it. He provides that as well. So he takes on all kind of pressure and triumphs. And he takes on little, you know, just little extras as well. He just takes us further um, than we think we can go. And he takes us to every other spot that we need to go. Uh, I think Philip Clement has passed the taste. I think that, that's it. He's kind of passed the taste test. And uh, it tastes like, uh, you know, mussels and chips and waffles and, and ice cream. And that's absolutely fantastic by me. Uh, they're, talking about the, they're talking about our captain. Talking about the aura. I, I remember I crossed the water there. Just like, no, I crossed the water that way. Uh, back in 1987, I was just turning 17, turning 18, and there was two things I wanted most in my life at the start of 1987. It was to see Rangers winning the league and to see you 2 in concert. Yes, I said you 2 Listen, Ali and Ian Durant had the hairdos and all that. They were right into it as well. It was just a thing that you did when you were a young guy then. We didn't realise they were just a glorified cold play because cold play weren't around yet. But uh, I, I was right into you. I bought everything that you 2 He said, listen, he said it's not a rebel song. You know, he doesn't. It's all, it's all about no joining the IRA. So it's okay, it's okay, we're all into it. Just a musical thing um, and I saw us winning the league and it was absolutely magnificent then I went over to the SEC and it was three years later when I saw the, the Manic sale that I realised it's a crap venue actually the, the, the acoustics are absolutely terrible at the SECC but uh, it wasn't very good I just bought there was a Joshua Tree tour I just bought the Joshua Tree and that was the end that was the end of my uh, love affair with you 2 it became super bland after that uh, super bland during that, and I was starting. And the whole idea was the two men you were supposed to, the, the guys with the aura, the guys you were supposed to be watching. It uh, was uh, the edge, you know, he was all kind of taciturn and skeletal and, and stoic, and he just belted out the tunes without, without blinking an eyelid. And then there was the, the kind of chunky pixie, the bouncy Bono, you know, and oh, he's fantastic, oh, he's so emotional, man, he's so emotive, and all that. And, no. It was Adam Clayton, you know, on base. Adam Clayton just standing there, and he's just—he's got the dog collar on, he's got uh, an old manky T-shirt, pair of uh, drain pipe jeans, Doc Martens, and he's just bang, 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 just bang, <laughs> just like he could have been Chaz and Dave. Um, it, but he was absolutely fantastic. He was just thumping out that base, totally unpretentious. He was absolutely fantastic. He was the guy that I noticed. And then cut to I don't know, 20 years later, back on the other side of the Clyde, I'm up in the, the Govan Stan, my old season ticket, and there's a team called Barcelona, we're playing them in the Champions League. And we've got guys called Xavi, eh, Iniesta, Thierry Henry, and this wee fella called Messi, they're the guys to watch. Ronaldinho, these are the guys you have to watch, they have the aura about these players, absolutely fantastic. It was Carlos Puyo. Of course, we held them nil-nil. They're getting angry, they're getting fractious, but we held them to a nil-nil, a great night for Rangers at Ibrox. But the guy I noticed was Carlos Puyol, the fullback. This chunky wee fullback, eh, went on to become a captain, they scored a winner in a World Cup semi-final, the man. And eh, he's just belting up and down the wing, just belting up and down the wing, giving it absolutely everything. He was loving the fact that it was a door battle. He was right up for it, no quarter asked or given. I think he applauded us at the end as well. 
and uh, I thought he was fantastic. He was just an, an, an absolutely fantastic dude. And he was the guy I noticed. Now that sounds like I'm being kind of contrary. It sounds like I'm just, you know, well, everybody else is expecting me to like these people, but no, I'm actually going to like somebody that nobody else thinks about. You know, that's kind of, kind of pretentious. I'm no pretentious. But I was, uh, I was just reading uh, Walter Benjamin's uh, The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction the other day, and I was reading a wee bit all about aura. You know, how <laughs> the, the, the problem you've got these days is when things are mechanically reproduced, you know, you don't have to go and see the Mona Lisa. You can get a postcard of the Mona Lisa. You can get a, an absolutely perfect photograph of the Mona Lisa and a book on art or something like that. So what's the point of these things? What's the point of going to see them? Um, and the aura there is being completely lost as far as he's concerned. Now, I saw James Tavernier, it was, it was via television actually, the first, the original, was against Hibs at Easter Road in 2000, July 2015. He curled that free kick into the top corner. That was the first of his 120 goals uh, for Rangers and he's mechanically reproduced that form ever since. Um, and has he lost his aura? I don't think so. I think that's just what counts. It's, not, it's, it's the automatisms, the automatisms that our manager wants, being able to just perform at a level again and again and again. James Tavernier does that. He absolutely does that. And uh, that's, it's, a, it's a mechanical reproduction. And that's his aura. It's not an aura, it's sprezzatura. You know, I'm, not, I'm not pretentious, but you want to get your Baldazar Castel Yoni's book of the quarter um, talks all about sprezzatura. Easy grace. You, know, you don't make a big deal about it. You don't take the plaudits. You just do the business. James Tavrier didn't score today. I don't think he even had an assist, but there's one moment early in the second half, he just dribbles through three or four players and pulls a, back across, <laughs> pulls a perfect ball across the face of the goal. Nobody puts it in the back of the net. Everybody misses it because they're, you know, everybody else is, isn't he paying attention. It's the, it's the fault of the other players, so Tav doesn't get a number. He just jogs back and starts doing what he's got to do again. He's been asked to do so many different things under so many different managers. He won't get the same number of goals or assists under Philip Clement because he's having to play a tiny bit deeper, uh, a tiny bit more infield. He'll just keep doing it. You know, that's his aura. <laughs> He's absolutely fantastic, Tav, um, and it didn't really matter because we're already 4-0 up at that point in time. This team is built around an axis of three players, uh, four players, I would say. Connor Goldson, uh, he's come back from injury last season. Connor's back to his, his usual, uh, never, never missing a game. We've got Jack Butland uh, in goal, super Jack Butland in goals, and John Lundstrom has played himself into uh, John Lundstrom has been starting as regularly as we like to think uh, over the course of the past couple of seasons. He has had injuries as well. He's not always been in this kind of form, so he's now part of that team. But John, uh, James Tavernier, James Henry, Carlos Puyo, Adam Clayton, Tavernier, and his aura are just playing away absolutely fantastically all the time uh, for Rangers. They are this kind of axis around which other players, like I thought Todd Cantwell was just slowly starting to start more games, and I think the whole idea with Clement is that he will eventually. This is just this is just kind of preliminary drawings we've got just now from um, from Philip Clement of what his vision is for Rangers, and he's starting to fill in, he's starting to shade it, and he's starting to get the paint onto it as well. And we saw that today. He just took us to. He's taking to us, taking us to other levels as each week. And each game goes on. It's absolutely phenomenal to watch. It's fascinating to watch. And it's inspirational. And it's so bloody entertaining at times as well. We've gone from kind of maybe struggling to beat Aberdeen 2 1 <laughs> to pasting Hearts 5 0. What is that? A fortnight? <laughs> Something like that. Absolutely amazing. Uh, I thought Todd Cantwell was getting added to that axis. An axis that's going to get bigger and bigger as he gets more and more of his own signings and gets more and more of his own kind of players, um, the kind of players that he wants. And the axis will get so big that it just becomes one of those big barrel steamroller wheels and the big thing you get in front of you a steamroller it's going to steamroller over the rest of Scotland but right now right now I thought Cantwell's is going to start adding to that and we're going to start getting like half the team is going to be regulars no he gets the injury during the week and I was slightly worried I was thinking that could affect us badly Jesus Christ I think what we've done today with the uh, Diamondi remaining in the sitting two with uh, John Lundstrom. That was just a position he played for the first time last week. And he's only started two league games for Rangers. He scored the opening goal in both those games. <laughs> both victories. 3 nothing and 5 nothing. We then had Tom Lawrence. Just get Tom Lawrence, who's been injured for ages and has been getting kind of slowly bled back into the team. He goes and he starts in the 10 of the day. And it's sumptuous. Absolutely sumptuous. We did not miss Todd Cantwell. The way we have not missed Danilo. The way we have not missed Seema. It's unbelievable under this manager the way he just keeps telling us what he's going to do. Now, there's been, you know, 
one of the most beautiful things following Rangers, one of the best ways, I think a lot of Rangers fans actually expect to get praise from other te- the fans of other teams or Celtic fans and what have you. Just watch the way the slaggings change and that is the praise in itself. You know, can you you know can you see the Rangers coming? You know, and and it's it's got to a point just now where it's you're lucky, your cheats, whatever. Absolutely brilliant. I absolutely love it. Um, and I think we'll eventually start getting a slagging for the directness of our play. I think a lot of people, a lot of Rangers supporters, are really happy with the way they're so direct under Philip Clement, and that will eventually get willfully misunderstood as being long ball football or what have you. But my God, it isn't. You know, there are there are long balls over the top, but they're so cultured, and our ability to get onto a second ball is absolutely phenomenal. And I think you see today that the idea of firing a ball straight into somebody <laughs> when you're watching it at close quarters today. You have to have a player who's like John Lundstrom, who's going to get in that, that sitting midfield position and will win the ball, first and foremost, knows where to be, can see the players in front of them that he needs to hit. Tav does this like nobody else. Isn't. Tav de Cantwell was, has been really great over the past couple of weeks in a, in a link-up. Um, but they fire the ball into somebody like somebody like uh, Silva when he come on today, uh, eventually, or to, to Dessers, and the way they control the ball, the way they take the ball and turn it, is absolute. That's it's like you're minimising this. You're, you're kind of minimising the. I'm not going to start talking about aesthetics. That's another Walter Benjamin thing. But you're minimising how spectacular it is in the moment. But to actually do it requires a level of skill that is just. Uh, it's targeted. The, the, the manager knows the kind of players he has. Uh, he's a disposal that can do the kind of things he needs to be done. And it's so much more than just a high ball over the top. It's having the players that can provide those kind of high balls, uh, provide those kind of direct balls from midfield straight to the edge of the opposition box. Rangers are keeping teams hemmed in. Yeah, a great article, a great piece, sorry, a great video on the, the Rangers Review during the week. Uh, Joshua Barry breaking down how we play under Clement. Really interesting. And... It's not so much that we're, we're keeping teams kind of... Uh, we're not recycling the ball so much as <laughs> we're fly-tipping a huge, glory-stained, big mattress into their box. <laughs> and it's just every time they try to clear their lines, it comes bouncing back into their faces. Uh, we absolutely exhaust teams. We overwhelm them. What was the... Was it four changes today to the to start an 11 from St Johnston? You can see straight away. I think that's, we've, had, we've had a whole week off. We've been, playing, we've been playing two games a week or three games a week. However you want to phrase it. Weekend, midweek, weekend, midweek, we've been playing for so long and we get a whole week off and the improvement that that brings about, even with another injury, even with another key injury, and Todd Cantwell being announced uh, yesterday, he's been out for a few weeks. No, we've just stepped it up a gear. Uh, God, I'm getting giddy, I'm getting a bit of white. I might actually pass out here, I'm so happy, I don't know what to talk about first. Um, but we had the four change, and the manager does that thing. I heard them on the radio the day, the same as I heard them before the game on Sky last last week at, uh, up at McDermott. Uh, have I made four changes? I don't know how many changes. Is it five? Is it six? I don't really know. You know, he's so, he's totally at it, and it's totally brilliant. I don't know how many changes we've made. Um, I don't know what surface we're playing on. What day of the week is it? I don't. I, why are we playing on a, a pitch of uh, dead kitten pelts um, at Barcelona in the, in the Inter City First Cup? What, is, what day is it? Where we're he's absolutely phenomenal. Just playing an absolute blinder. Um, but I, he's changed. I've never felt Rangers to be more squad than first eleven in my entire life. Now you'll come back at me. There'll be other examples probably, but uh, of seasons over the last forty odd that I've been following Rangers. But it feels like we've never used a squad the way we have just now. And it's but it's a squad of, as I say, the squad has been used for what five, six positions, constant rotation, bringing on substitutes as early as in second half as possible. Uh, and you get to the point where you don't actually... Today it was, Yilmaz was in for Borna Barisic, at left back, Borna's coming back from injury. We had Dessers on for Silva, you know, so Dessers coming on and uh, all those misses he had the other week at uh, McDermott last Sunday at McDermott. No, he's in the positions, he's doing the runs. He leads the line well, Dessers. He really does lead the line so well, not just like days today when he's scoring the goals. Um, he's, a, he's a real nouse about him for a guy who's so slow as well. He's obviously, I mean, he has got a bit, a bit more pace than he had at the beginning of the season. He's recovered from injury, but he doesn't have a lot of pace uh, for a striker. But my God, the nouse, the, the street smarts, the game management he has is absolutely fantastic. Just the finishing sometimes is awful. Um, but he's making so many chances that he will eventually score. And he did that today. Uh, so we Dessers in uh, for Silva starting today. What else to be? Oh, obviously, Tom Lawrence coming in at 10 for Cantwell. And out on the right hand side, that's a bit of a criticism of Scott Wright, uh, who will be getting in poor Scott's case over the last week or so. 
but there's <laughs> Mr Utility himself, Dujon Sterling, on the right-hand side of that, that three. Uh, I think he just got to play ten uh, centre forward and goalie, and that's him covered every position uh, this season. But uh, he was wide on the left at St Mirren, and here he is uh, wide on the right today to start with. That seemed a bit weird to me. I thought we'd have a more, you know, the manager saying Ross McCausland needs to get a bit more rest, even though he came on in the second half. It's, it's, there's a reason for everything. Nobody's just getting dumped. You know, it's uh, we're, we're a squad moving forward together. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, but yeah, that, that was the changes today, and. Yeah, it was the first minute, first minute, or just over a minute on the clock, and it's like I've said this thing before: if we kick off a game, we get like a corner within forty odd seconds, or a chance on goal within forty odd seconds of us taking centre. Hearts took centre today, so it took us, you know, just over. That's an extra few seconds we had to add on to it. So it was just over the one minute mark when I don't know what the hell happened. I, don't, I think it was Cortez that somehow got the, maybe he the shots, and there was a follow up. But I'm sitting in the main stand, and I just saw Diamondi picking up. He's up and down, Diamondi. He's, he's like a kind of sweeper for the centre halves in front of the centre halves. If they don't get the ball, he'll go in there and he'll make sure that they get it. And he's also up at the edge of the box waiting for rebounds and what have you. And he just he picks the ball up at the edge of the box and I'm just looking right down the side. I'm looking right down the length. I'm looking right down the barrel. And you can see him uh, lining it up and it's straight away and it leaves his boot. You know, that's going to curl in and it's past the goalkeeper's hand at the same time and it goes in that far right-hand post and the one nothing place goes absolutely berserk. <laughs> And then it's just, you, you think, are we going to do that thing again? What we've been doing recently, this one complaint I've managed to find, and you have to look quite hard for them these days, is that we're um, sometimes scoring a goal early doors, really early, and then we kind of get a second. Remember against Aberdeen, I think even against the Ed United in the, in, the, in the Scottish Cup, we get a goal really early on. If we get it really early, it takes us ages to get that second goal, and it did. It took us a whole, what, 35 minutes <laughs> today. And there's a few chances for Dessers, um, he seemed to, I think he was offside for one of them, but he seemed to be really close on the goal. He should have just slotted it under him or past him, didn't manage it. So there's a wee kind of, uh, bit of frustration uh, about that. And then he had another chance at the back post, I think it was a header that he's, the foot I was sitting looked really easy uh, and he missed that. And I, but you, even then, and it's, this is this is how Clement has changed things, seeing the boys run about. Is, I, but he, does, he leads the line well, doesn't he? He leads the line well. It, people are saying, yeah, he's missing the chances, but uh, my, I remember my uncle. <laughs> I think Monko Howard, who I used to go to, we're on a mid-80s vibe anyway. I was thinking the day about the Hearts came to Ibrox back in 85, 86 season, the second time that season, and they had the whole of the Brimlin and a bit of the, the, a bit of the Govan, a bit of the, the West Enclosure, a bit of the main stand. This was just before we broke Hearts. Uh, that, everybody broke Hearts that season. Uh, 85, 86, when Hearts lost the league in the last day of the season. But what a support they had, you know. And I, I had a wee vibe of that today, thinking it was going to be the same thing. But we were crap back then, and Hearts won 2 nothing that day. Sandy Clark and all that playing for them. And that was a, as a kid, I just realised Hearts were a massive, massive club. They had a kind of thing. I felt as if it was going to be a bit like that today. Rangers and Hearts right at it. Uh, no, just no. Hearts went right back to just being the way they've been over the last 20 odd years, I'm afraid. Uh, out of our hands today. But I remember my uncle at that period, I was, you know. Uh, Ali McCoy would miss hundreds of chances, you know, in the kind of uh, early to mid, like 83, I think it was, it signed for his Ali, wasn't it? 83, 84, 85, you know, Ali, Ali, get to the France, and you know, that kind of stuff. He would miss so many chances, like, this guy's just useless. And I remember like, Ian Ferguson, not Ian Ferguson that we got for St. Mid, not, not <laughs> the icon Ian Ferguson, but the um, quite brilliant uh, other Ian Ferguson that played for Dundee United and Hearts and, you know, scored three kicks against Bayern Munich for Hearts and um, scored I think, the new camp against Barcelona, scored a winner for us in the League Cup final, scored for Motherwell in a winning Scottish Cup final. But fantastic player, Ian Ferguson. But I remember like, he was at Rangers at that time as well and said, Ferguson's much better, his goals are absolutely brilliant. And my uncle said, I remember my uncle said to me, I bet he'll score his goal, but then he'll, no do it. he'll get one goal maybe every couple of weeks and if there's no chance of doing it, he'll no get involved. So he wasn't even getting in the way to miss chances. And I just think, you know, so Ian Ferguson ends up getting to a European final with Dundee United and stuff like that. No, not a bad player in any way, a cracking player. Scored the first uh, European goal I ever saw Rangers scoring. But uh, Super Ali ends up, he's getting slagged for missing chances in what is effectively a Champions League semi final <laughs> against Siska Moscow by 1993. He's got two golden boots and stuff like that. You know, Alan McCoy is an absolute utter legend uh, of the, the European game, never mind the Scottish game. So, I think it's the same thing with Dessers. You're looking at missing a couple of chances. You're thinking, oh, nah, we're getting the message now. It's starting to filter through uh, what he's all about. 
Although it was Cortez that made it uh, two nothing. I think was it Cortez. Ah, it was Cortez that makes two nothing. Just a, a beautiful breakaway. It was the the captain involved in that? Must have been. It was up the right hand side. Tom Lawrence just is such a graceful player. Tom Lawrence. He's one of the guys that floats across the, glass, the grass, doesn't he? He could float across glass as well, but uh, he cuts it right across the the eighteen yard box, right across the eighteen yard line, really. And there at the back post is uh, Cortez, and it's the same thing. It's the same thing as with the. We the uh, Diamonde goal in the, in the second minute, you could just see it right down the line of his shot. That's going in. That is, that's curling back in to the right hand post. The, the goalie again gets down, but can't get there. Fantastic shot, two nothing. This is looking absolutely fantastic. Um, and I didn't know. I was so so busy buzzing at the fact that we'd got our second goal before the opposition could come back into the game. We're two nothing up before half time. That was great. We're back to that form we showed against Hibs in um, our manager's first game in charge of us back in October. I'm thinking right, that's fine. Uh, fantastic. Oh, there's a ball up to the back post. What a ball that is. And there's Cyril Dessers just to, just to round it off. 3 nothing before half time. And it was at half time I'm saying to folk, who put that ball in? I just assumed it must have been Ridvan Yilmaz, um, who was absolutely fantastic. It could have been Cortez, because he's on the left hand side. He's a left hand sided attacker. Could have been Cortez, um, who had a good game today. Ridvan Yilmaz, I thought, was a contender for Man of the Match. He was absolutely fantastic today. The wee man, he was everywhere. Uh, he had the, the Hearts boy in his back pocket, and he was just so good going forward. Um, so it probably more likely to be him because I think it came from a bit deeper. No, it was apparently it was John Souter. <laughs> It's John Souter just knocking in this ball from you know, the left hand area, I think probably our own half, which just this is what I'm talking about. How direct does it get? Your centre half. It, that's how Rangers are. That's how Rangers are. It's just the centre half knocks up to a striker. It's like Wimbledon or Watford for the for the mid 80s, you know. Um, no, what a ball it was. Absolutely fantastic. There is culture and artistry to what we are doing. And uh, yeah, that was a fantastic. That was it. Everybody at half time is just kind of looking at each other going, this is bloody great. This is, there's just nothing to worry about. Uh, we're looking absolutely fantastic. And we come out in the second half, and within you know, two or three minutes of kickoff, it's, it's 4 nothing. It's 4 nothing. Uh, a, a, a stramash um, in the goal mouth, Arthur Montford copyright. It's bouncing about in there, I don't know if it's a corner tears or whatever, a beautiful sunny day at Ibrox as well. And in goes the, uh, I, the Cyril Dessers in there, he just slams it into the top corner and he's running up towards me and it's this nice one Cyril, nice one son, nice one Cyril. Let's have another two. Let's, I think we start specifying how many we want for the guy if we're going to start slagging him for only getting two goals in the game. So that's yet again Cyril Dessers has only got uh, two goals in a game. Um, it's Ali McCoy versus He's Ian Ferguson and if more symbolism 56th minute 56th minute um, we get two substitutes coming on it was Ross McCausland coming on for um do John Sterling, who'd done that job for us on the right-hand side. So Ross McCausland comes on a more naturally right-hand sided attacking player. And we also had Silva coming on um, for, it wasn't for Dessers, it was for Tom Lawrence. And Silva goes into the 10 because that's the signings the manager has made. Uh, and it's the guys who can play you know, up front or who can play in the 10 or who can play wide. It's just all over the park attacking these three signings he's made. Uh, in January and Silva was fantastic the minute he came on just took us up another level Hearts just could not handle it they were all at sea he's attacking left, right and centre and John Lundstrom who probably was man of the match today I thought it was phenomenal Big Lunny I did say I was, I was kind of only half joking uh, we all thought he was playing for a new contract that was a cynicism you know a few months ago he's only playing so well because it's a new manager he wants to keep his place uh, he's only playing so well because it's, his contract's up at the end of the season he wants to make sure he gets it renewed and it was halfway during that conversation, I did say, maybe he's just playing to get a bloody move because he's so good, he could be attracting attention from his homeland. Um, and apparently the word is that he's not accepted a new contract yet, he wants more money, fucking game it, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, what a, a lovely no-look pass, reverse ball, uh, such a cultured ball, and there's Silva right on the end of it because that boy can read football, he can read other footballers, and he slams that ball right across the goal into the net, it's 5 nothing. Um, what was that, 65 minutes or something, and I'm just basically spending the rest of the game going, don't score another one, because I want this, you know, I want this five goals, five points clear, five stars on the kit type thing, you know, and we can thank our lucky stars that we're not as smart as we like to think we are, you know, would you still sign Shankland? I'd still sign Shankland. What about Mayofsky? Also Mayofsky, but we can thank our five white stars that we are not as smart as we like to think. I'm using the Royal We. That's Dean Friedman, by the way, folks. Um, Dean Friedman, one of the weirdest songs ever to hit the, the British charts. Look it up. I know I'm a terrible singer, but that's actually exactly, that's exactly uh, how he sounds uh, in that song. But yeah, I did want us to sign Shankland, and I think we still should. I think Lauren Shankland is kind of almost becoming like the Gabriel Batistuta uh, for the Gorgie boys. It's like we, we can step in there like Roma and take him away from this. He's, he's only been at Hearts for 
two years basically, but the goals he scored. Lauren Shankland makes me watch. He makes me watch more of sports scene. I'll just watch the Rangers game uh, on sports scene highlights and turn the program off. No interested then, Nels. Unless Celtic get beat, let's be honest. About watch their game, but I. Uh, it's actually been making me watch. Lauren Shankland is is iconic for Hearts. Let's you know. Let's no kid ourselves on. He scored this season. He has scored um, home and away in Europe for him against Rosenberg. You know, we're no mean. You know, they're, uh, quite, quite the team, quite the club, uh, and quite the myth in Europe. Uh, Rosenberg. He scored home and away against them as he picked them at the playoffs. He scored their only goal in their, uh, when they get, they, they get beat. It wasn't the, it was in the playoffs to get beat off Palak Salonica. He scored their only goal uh, in that tie. He scored a last minute winner against Hibs at Easter Road. This is a Hearts captain. He scored uh, home and away against Celtic, you know, and they've won at Parkhead this season. Hearts. Uh, did you see the game against Dundee at Dens Park a few weeks ago? They were, they were struggling in that game. He basically took it by the scruff of the neck and won it himself. I mean, he could have had a hat-trick. I think he only scored two of the goals. Somebody took one off his feet, but he scored a home and away against Aberdeen. Um, he scored in his last two visits to Ibrox. He scored against us the last two times he's played against us. It's Ham- at Hamden. That's one you might have to think about as well. But uh, today, he, he hit the post. His heart's only chance today. We had a header on the back post. I think it was 5 nothing at the time. He also had a shot towards uh, Jack Butland. I still think we should sign the guy. But the symbolism. I'm talking about the symbolism city that it is under Philip Clement right now of him just ripping off his armband, getting subbed after part of the day. We have about a quarter of an hour to go, 12 minutes to go or something like that, just chucking the heart's armband on the floor um, and going off the park in a big strop. But it's hold him only having had any, any sniff that the Jambos had in this game, his team having had not a sniff generally. Uh, the the idea that we didn't sign the players we should have signed the January transfer window just exposed as complete crap today by Philip Clement, who just keeps getting it right. Absolutely fantastic. Listen, folks, I'm, I'm ranting and raving as usual, and we should enjoy this moment. It's a bit like last week. We should enjoy these moments. Um, it's so long since we're top of the league and then it's been so long since we've had a day today, day like today where we are top of the league and we augment it and in such fine style, such, such fine style as well, it's, my language has gone, my mouth's gone, my head's gone, it's just so good, we should enjoy it, but um, I'm always ranting and raving about music and I think a lot of people don't, Alec, why are you always going to bit Mariah Carey, why, why are you always, you, you seem to be, you know, you, you love really deep bands, like you too, you know, and the Smiths and stuff like that, why are you always uh, going on about Mariah Carey, you know, and we belong together, I'm so into you, darling, if you only knew, because I love my R&B and I love that kind of stuff, but, but Mariah Carey is a front for me, when I want to talk about R&B, when I want to uh, have a, you know, something a bit more soulful, I put on a bit more. Emancipation of Mimi's a great album. There's four or five absolute classics on that album. But what it is is I don't want to talk about my real my real love in that department, which is uh, Mary J. Blige. I mean Mary J. Blige. I j- I can't deal. I actually can't talk about it without crying. Um, once for a joke, uh, one December, my wife got me. Uh, I was dropping her off at her work. I was taking the car. I must been gone somewhere. I can't remember where I was gone. And I I, I dropped her off at her work, and she's like, hey. By the way, I got you this for the drive, wherever it was going. Um, and it was a wee joke, and it was a Mary J. Blige Christmas album. She'd done a Christmas album, and we are like, oh, right, <laughs> the little drummer boy and all that. Aye, very good. That's, but I can probably stand this. This'll be, this'll be fine. You know, and um, so I papped it on. You know, as soon as I dropped her off, I just shoved that in the, the old CDs it was at the time. The Mary J. Blige Christmas album. Uh, Come, they told me, bar up a bum bum. That was it. She basically sang two bars and I had to pull over because you can't drive when you can't see for the tears streaming out of your face. Um, Mary J. Blige just could read the phone book and had so much soul, so much meaning, so much joy in it, uh, so much pain at times. I just can't take it. I absolutely can't handle it. Uh, I just dissolve. I'm an absolute wreck. I can only watch her in private. I can't listen to her in company. Um, <laughs> And that's what it's like just now. We're in, the, we're, in, we're in the Mariah Carey zone right now. Let's be, let's have a bit of fun. Let's enjoy this. We're not starting to count any chickens. We don't think we've won anything. It's it's at the end of the season if we lift this Premiership title, eh, as well as whatever we do against them. Um, Benfica. The eagle has landed. Big Biffy Barnsley. <laughs> He knows that we've got Benfica in the Europa League. That's a fantastic. That's a that's a, that's a prize in itself. That it's when I was growing up, um, Benfica had won the. 
the European Cup more times than Barcelona. It was them, Milan and Real Madrid were the greatest icons uh, of European football. And to have them coming to Ibrox this time in front of a crowd, to get to see them live at Ibrox. I went down to Anfield to see Benfica because they're so massive. I've just had to see them live one time in my life. Um, and we've got them here. That's just that's a prize in itself, that fixture. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, but it'll be the end of the season when we can get ourselves properly emotional when it'll be no more drama and a bit of proper uh, Mary J Blige when the tears will flow and all that kind of stuff and you can't count on that kind of stuff happening a long, a long way to go we're getting into as I say, that business end that, that busy end of the season there's going to be more competitions coming up now hopefully we can squirrel away just three more points um, maybe six because we might, we might beat Motherwell next week and we've got two more league games before that all starts before the Scottish Cup and Europe comes back into it as well. Um, and Kilmarnock's difficult. Kilmarnock, is a really, they, they, I think they won again today, so they are now the other form team in Scotland. They're consolidating a European place. Derek McInnes knows what he's doing. He knows how to give Rangers real nightmares. And um, the old firm have lost um, at Rugby Park three times this season. I don't want to be half in, and they lost two of those games. Um, but uh, neither Rangers or Celtic have scored at Rugby Park in three attempts uh, this season between the two of us. So we go off um, to make it four attempts for the old firm on Wednesday night. Also a difficult fixture. Uh, we're not counting any chickens. So we don't want to get into the deep stuff, how cathartic it will be if we do lift this title. But today we should just enjoy it in the short term, enjoy the, our team playing so well and having such a great result against the, you know, the third biggest support in Scotland. And I would say to you, go home, folks, and stick on... Um, or oh, You're on YouTube just now if you're watching this. When you shut up my fat Yelp, if you haven't already, uh, go and just put in, be happy, Mary J. Blige. Be happy. Um, that'll come up. It's off the My Life album. And go for the one that's over five minutes long. There's one that's just the official, the one that was in the charts. You want the album, Andre Hurrell produced album uh, version for the kind of instrumental at the beginning, which goes into the, the kind of harp, and then the, the slapping bass comes in. And she's just saying, all I want to do is be happy, and we can be happy tonight. That's a, that's a Mary J. Blige one that will know have you in bits, it will have you dancing. Uh, and that's what we should do tonight. Just enjoy the funk, enjoy the groove. Um, Enjoy your night, and uh, you probably have seen the boys already. Uh, Craig and Scott will have done a much, a much more on point, a much more accurate um, debrief of today's game in there, in the in the stadium, in the stadium post-match reaction pod for Jersnet. I'm still doing my in the stadium bar one here uh, for you. Uh, so enjoy that, and tomorrow night I think it's Scott and Craig again on the the flagship show at half past nine on Jersnet, and they'll be joined by Ross Bennett. I think so. That should be an absolutely brilliant show, folks. Get on that because it's so much to enjoy and uh, so much to look forward to. And uh, me, I'm just um, I'm just going to get off home because there's a there's a star man. I'm going to go off and get my Get my five guys. There's a star man waiting in the sky. He'd like to come and meet us, but he's got to go to five guys. And there's a, a sixth star, a sixth star, maybe be somewhere down the line um, because there's another guy we've got, a big Belgian fella, who's uh, going to put as many stars in our kit as he can possibly manage. What a great day it's been, folks. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy your Saturday night. Talk to you soon.